We'll create the drop down menu scripting inside Dreamweaver. So we'll open up the uptrigger HTML file we produced from Photoshop. And here we're looking at the file. All the graphics are set into a table and that's what we're looking at. And what we want to do is wrap the table. We've been working with wrappers for the last couple weeks and we just use a div tag to wrap that table. And we'll take a look at the CSS for this div tag. The width is set to 640, the height 100%, and the margin set to 0 auto, 0 auto. And we're setting the positioning to relative. And there you have the table nicely wrapped sitting in the center of the screen. We're going to add a second AP div to hold the sub menu. And then we're going to load that sub menu with the graphics. So just drag the graphics into the layer. And then you're prompted with an image tag attribute window and just type in some alternate text. So there we have the two sub menu items. In the top left corner, the square there is actually a handle and you can pull the layer around using that handle. And so we've pulled it up just under the word designs. And you can also tug on the blue handles and resize it. Now we're going to apply a uh, behavior to the layer inside the timeline. So we're actually going to pick up the layer and drag it into the timeline. So use the handle to do that. And then you're prompted with the timeline inspector can animate the following properties. And so there's the layer inside the timeline. And it has two keyframes, one at frame one. And we've slid the second keyframe to frame number five. And what we're going to do is add this behavior show hide elements in the behavior channel. And we're going to actually hide AP div 2 when we get to frame 5. And so that's what it looks like in the behavior panel on frame 5, show hide elements. And in the timeline in the channel, the B channel, you can see the blue rectangle there indicates a behavior. Now we're going to work with the target or the trigger graphic. In this case it's the word designs and we're going to have a timeline behavior and this behavior is called play timeline and we want to play timeline number one. And it lists the time timeline behavior there and the event that will trigger it. Now we want to change that event. We don't want it to be triggered on the click. We want it to be triggered basically when you roll out. So we've done that. We're going to add four behaviors in total. So there's another behavior coming. They show hide elements. In this case, we want to show AP div 2. And again, not on the click. We want to show on the mouse over. Basically, when you roll over the trigger, it reveals the AP div 2. That's what we're going for here. And another timeline behavior. In this, in this case, we're going to go to the timeline frame. And we're going to go to frame number one. That's the idea. We, in a way, we want to rewind the playhead, send it back to frame number one. And we want to do that on a mouse over. And 
And the fourth and last uh, behavior we're going to set is stop timeline. So again, it's a timeline behavior we're setting and we're going to set that on a mouse over. And this is a timeline we're stopping, timeline number one. Make sure you select that. So there you have the four behaviors for the trigger graphic. Now what we want to do is apply some behaviors to the actual graphics inside the uh, AP Div 2 inside our submenu. And we want to apply a play the timeline when the, when the mouse is outside. And we also want to set a go to the timeline frame, go to frame number one on mouse over and stop the timeline on mouse over. And there you have the three behaviors there. And we also want to set them for the second submenu item. So, so both analog and digital have these three behaviors. Now we want to set the visibility to hidden. You'll notice that has changed there in the visibility window because we want to hide that submenu after we've left it. There are the properties again. You can see the visibility is set to hidden. And if we look at the CSS in the code view, uh, we can also see the properties. So there you have the main menu. And then what we're going to do then is set the nav bar images for when uh, we roll over those menu items. And then just check to see if the visibility is set to inherit. Sometimes this happens. So my suggestion is just to delete that from the code as it might interfere with our uh, hidden menu process. So there's your main menu. That's what it should look like. And then if you roll over designs, what should happen is the analog and digital will appear. And then if you roll over analog, it'll go to the nav bar image, the over image, as well as digital will go to the digital image. And that's how the menu is going to work today. So that's it. Congratulations. Have a great day.